for President Terry as he takes us into the upcoming year and for the new goals and plans that he has. Give us wisdom. Help us to honor you each day. We pray for these things. Amen. Thank you, Beth. Well, welcome, everybody. Happy Monday. Lynn is out. She's got our traveling mic today for our guest. We're going to get the format right here before we turn things over to to Terry. So do we have any guests? Okay. Oh, yeah, you might want to do that, Terry. Let's not start off the wrong foot here. So my guest today is my wife, Maria. She's a middle school teacher at Montessori School. Kelly, do we have any other guests today? No? Well, we do have some guests that are not, they were guests last week, but now they're not guests. So we're going to uh, introduce Gabe Tudor and Amy Welty as new members of the Worcester Rotary Club. So let's give them a round of applause. Come on up. So Gabe and Amy, you have the red probationary um, um, you know, tags. So you know, you're on the 90 day review here. So let's make sure we're, we have good attendance, you know. All right. Okay, so, yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate you being a part of Mr. Rotary. So two really good members. I'm gonna go through some slides here real quick just to talk about uh, some things that we, uh, we had going this week. I wanted to share one story and not sure why this one isn't going here, Cheryl. Uh-huh. And can I control from there? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna try to move this too so I can read this. So this is a pretty cool email that went out to some of our, our, uh, our flag volunteers. Finn Sears is a rising sophomore at Walter Payton College Prep High School in Chicago. He's also my grandson. He came to visit this week thinking he'd probably just kick back and hang out with his grandparents. Grandpa, well, he had another idea. New subscriptions had been coming in for Rotary Flags since the Flag Day event and had grown sufficiently to uh, require some attention. Finn enthusiastically agreed to assist while well, he did all the heavy lifting and tackle the installation of the sleeves and then also uh, the flags as well. Yesterday, we finished up after experiencing most of the typical obstacles for those people who have done installs. A couple broken spikes, busted pipes, rocks really hard ground, et cetera, that installation teams encounter. The result, 19 new pipes and flags in the ground, which means I didn't have to mobilize the install team before Independence Day. Ben and I really appreciate what you do for this program. We're glad we could give you some well-deserved time off. The reason I highlight that is that my boy, Mike Steiner, has been leading the charge on new installs. And Mike has gone through a lot in the last couple of years. I don't know how many knee surgeries and hip surgeries he's had. And uh, the fact that that guy grabs his grandson and goes out and does install so that the younger bucks can have some time off, that's sort of the love self, Mike. And we really appreciate everything that you've done for the, for the club, for the flag program, and in introducing your grandson to the program. So, Mike, thank you so much. Those are some of the stories you see through emails that uh, we love to share you know, about our, our, our club and why it's so special. So this is uh, one thing I wanted to share. If you missed last Tuesday downtown, you missed a pretty good time. So uh, we had, I would say, roughly about 45 to 50 Rotarians come through in the two-hour block. It was our little you know, first attempt at trying to have a social um, in downtown. Here's the Dora. Um, here's some of our people. We met right at the square and how this worked. I'm going to tell you because you're not going to want to miss the next one. You came down right at the square. You got a drink ticket. Okay. That drink ticket allowed you to go to five or six different places in downtown and get whatever drink you would like and come back and socialize with the group. But we had a, a great time on Tuesday and look forward to, to future um, socials like that. So um, it was a great, great time. Uh, let's see what else I have here on my, my list. I do want you to know that next Monday, what's next Monday? July 5th. You said 4th of July. It's one day off July 5th. We will not have a meeting on July 5th. So I just wanted to, to let everybody to know that Terry takes over 
and his very first week, he doesn't have a meeting, okay? So uh, July 5th, we will not have a meeting. So uh, plan accordingly. Hopefully everybody is able to spend some time with their family on the 4th of July. I have no notes in front of me for this next portion. I was supposed to say something about my year. And so this year, I really didn't, I put some slides together, you'll see, threw those together this morning. So I didn't really prepare much. And that's the slogan for the year. I came in, and that's true, and here's why. I came in with some really, really good ideas. I remember when we were talking about COVID-19, remember all the banks came out with PPP and they were talking about how it's gonna be 12 weeks or normal, right? We're gonna float you for 12 weeks, everything's gonna be good. So in June, when we had our board meeting, um, I came on and I had this great idea for all these socials once a month, you know, and mix it up. All of that was put to the side. We didn't meet as a club my first month, month and a half. And then um, we started to receive some emails saying we need to continue to engage and how can we engage and where can we get creative? And I wanna, when I look back at the year and when I went through my phone on, on photos and then I looked at emails, really proud of the way that we uh, continue to engage our group and how you as members uh, were willing to try some new ideas and support the fact that it was our hundredth year on a very, very unique and challenging year. So I'm gonna go through these and I just want you to at least think about some of the things that COVID-19 maybe forced us to do, which longer term is gonna be a value add to the club. One case in point is we still have, Don's on the line there, Don. Don, can you hear me? There he is. Don, how are you doing, man? Don, can you wave? You wave, Don? Where's Mina at? The point is that all of this, uh, continue to find creative ways to engage our members. We continue to uh, record a number of our meetings, though. I don't know if we're recording today, Cheryl. Um, but that, uh, that goes into a YouTube archive for not only past uh, presentations, uh, but then also allowing more of our members to engage the club through uh, social components. The virtual component to Rotary, here you go. Here's one of our board meetings. So it, it, being a social creature that I am, this was a new approach for us, uh, but our, our board was extremely engaged with things. Here's a, uh, a breakout session to not only the, some of the, our local members, but then also our district as well. Uh, so it, we went to Zoom. And then here's, uh, again, another uh, a board meeting. So we were able to stay in touch using technology, which is awesome, right? And uh, it's, again, a, a component that we're definitely going to have to club moving forward. Our 100th anniversary project went through a number of iterations and delays, right? Where's my boy, Phil? Phil, what's the date on that one? Okay, so, so again, October 7th, our 100th anniversary. That'll fall under Terry's, but hold, you know, save the date for... October 7th, more details to come, but throughout the year, we continue to say, even though our 100 may be right past us, we're gonna to continue to, to plan for a bank within the fall. Our infrastructure upgrade, let's talk about this. You can actually hear me. Isn't that right, Tony? Yeah, see, Vigio loves it, so he can hear. And, uh, and then also the screens, phenomenal, phenomenal. So Tom Rumball in the church, and I brought this up over the last couple of months, but the fact that they made the investment they did, I think it's phenomenal. We, as a club, so you, all the members know, we are, are going to give the church at least $5,000 for the upgrades. Uh, we appreciate their partnership and continuing to host us. The 4th of July, for those who don't know, we're partnering with the, the city of Worcester and making sure that we're able to fund, partially fund the July fireworks. And I'm hopeful that that is something that we'll continue to do. So we will continue to get more press with that as we partner not only with the city of Worcester, Worcester Rotary, but then also the exchange club. So there's Gil Ning, um, who heads up Worcester Fireworks Inc. and, and uh, Worcester Rotary now is a part of that. Our nominating committee, I want to hit on this. You know, one of the questions I had when I was president was, or newly elected president was, so how do we know who wants to be on the board or who would like to be a president or maybe be a chair of a committee? Do we ever ask if there's interest? So we did do that. And we did send out a survey and said, if you wanna be engaged in your rotary, now's the time to, to, to express that. We had a number of people who said, hey, I would be interested in X, Y, Z. I think that makes, it's very basic, but when we're making decisions for, um, for you know, leadership roles, knowing who wants to be present 
uh, is probably the best thing to do moving forward. Also, for those who are sitting here saying, hey, I would like to be in some kind of leadership role, I would hope that throughout the year, um, this year, there would be uh, the opportunity for you to say, hey, I do have an interest in that. We did our bell ringing. Angel, you did awesome with that, arranging that. And, uh, you know, despite uh, setbacks with COVID, we felt we were able to fill all the box and, and did that this year. Meals with a mission. You want to highlight this one? Since he's not here, see this right here? That's Greg Long with a mask. Yes, he actually had a mask on, so that's awesome. But our Meals with a Mission was down more than 50%, but a lot of the Rotarians came together and, uh, and made that a reality in December, which was awesome. We even did our food drive, remember that? So here we got Commissioner uh, Becky Foster, and then we also have Daryl Lee here from uh, Mouse and Over did a bang up job with the food drive this year. So we didn't, uh, we didn't put the brakes on as far as what our involvement in the community was. Our Patriot Committee, we had two memorials, the Gold Star Family Memorial, and then I think this is the Fallen Soldiers Memorial off to, the, off to your right, off to the right. And uh, Greg Long does a bang up job in making sure that we're present, we're supporting those. And those funds uh, to support memorials like that come from our flight program on an annual basis. Uh, Joy, I don't know if you're here. I don't know if she is, but we did door hangers. Our marketing in the flight program was awesome. And if you've gone to the website and done your renewals, the upgrade that happened in the last year is phenomenal. So we had, I know that was a big, big bottleneck for the program and something that in the future we're not going to have to deal with. So hats off to those who helped from Susan to Joy to Sarah Baker to Terry Snotty. Uh, putting the time in to make sure that our the infrastructure, our, our flag program board is in good, uh, good, a good spot. Didn't get the finished product, but uh, our Memorial Grove, our hundredth year, you know, hats off to, to Ron and Peggy and Lynn for, for putting that together and leading that charge. Something that uh, I know will be a lasting impression for the community and for Oak Hill as uh, we continue to get the rotary wheel out there and honor those of our founding members of, of this career. For those uh, who are not privy, um, our 100th anniversary project, the second one is just, just online. We actually signed the contract for this on Friday. So uh, we've been waiting and waiting, but uh, this fall, um, while there'll be more details to come, uh, Wayne County will be home to one of the largest flags and flag poles in the state of Ohio along US Route 30 all led by Worcester Rotary. So we're really, really excited about that. A comparable one that will be, if you're driving down 71 towards Belleville, the love station, a 30 by 60 flag uh, is flown right over 71. And that's something that uh, Worcester Rotary put, is putting together um, and has moving forward with. So excited to share those with that updates with you over the next couple of months. Folks, this, this uh, organization supported our cooks in time of need. When we didn't have meals, we continued to support them by writing checks, by supporting them financially. And uh, we were able to do that. And uh, it was a, there was a discussion at the board is, hey, you know, how can we justify asking the members to, you know, to continue to spend money when they're not really getting, you know, the bang for the buck from the food. We, I think we had two emails of people asking if there could be a reduction in their, in their dues since they weren't uh, enjoying meals. Uh, two people out of 160. So the heart of our core and our club and supporting uh, our ladies uh, throughout the pandemic uh, was something that honestly was touching to my, so I know to our board members and, and to me specifically. And I love the idea that they were open-minded to new ideas. We did the drive-through thing, RSVP, you know, we had to do the social distance thing. There's Robin, uh, she's cruising with the top down here, picking up her meal. We also had a, a picnic. And quite candidly, the response from Sarah and her crew has always been, hey, whatever you guys wanna do, we're, uh, we're willing to give it a shot. On a, on a Saturday, we continue to lose some of our legendary members. So when you talk about, uh, here's one, Pete Bogner, Tom Cole, I know that's all roughly within the last year, some are over a year, but uh, our Rotary Club will continue to, to lose some of our members that have lasting will leave lasting uh, you know, fingerprints on, on the organization. And uh, I know more than just Pete and Tom, but uh, we did lose some this year. 
on the highlight of that is if you were here just over a month ago, we had one of our largest induction of new members. Um, so we continue to build our foundation for the future, um, despite numbers being down. And, and Lynn, what, when we started the year, where were we at uh, number-wise? I'm going to try to put you on the spot. Just So we're down about five. We're about 160 members. So we started the year at 165 with our new ones. Uh, we're at 160. And I guess that's all that uh, looks like the other slides didn't uh, come through. That's fine. But here's the point. The point is that I think that if challenging year, and when you look at other social service clubs, uh, this club out of any in Wayne County continue to stay active, try to reinvent itself, engage members active in the community. And I'm not sure that we took much of a step back. And you can, you can come up with ideas and you could you know, say, hey, this is how we stay engaged but without the true support and engagement from our members. Uh, that doesn't happen. For me, an extremely rewarding year, um, one that was challenging, uh, one that had some disappointment in the fact that we couldn't do exactly what maybe was on the agenda, but one that I find that was extremely, extremely fulfilling. Fulfilling the fact that, yeah, we did try new things and you guys were open to many of them. So the respect, I do want to hit on this, the respect amongst the different groups on the take of masking, social distancing, um, COVID-19, while there was black and white, there was nothing down the middle as to what we should do. The respect out of both groups was exactly what you would expect out of a Rotary Club and something that made my job a lot easier, a lot easier this year. So thank you to the club. Thank you to the board for entrusting me uh, with the keys to the car for the last year. I truly am, I'm, I'm so glad that I said yes. Um, it might have been a weird time of year for changing professions and stuff like that. The plate was a little full, but I know that I'm leaving things in great hands. Working with Terry uh, closely, really, in the last three months as we prep for him to take, take the reins. Terry is a consummate professional and will definitely have the best, uh, you know, best interest of the club moving forward. And uh, I congratulate him on, on being our interim president. So, that being said, Thank you so much for the support. I'm gonna have past president Bob Gorman come up here and uh, wish me off. Thank you and let me be the last to call you President Justin. Past president isn't too bad a, a title, you know. But, you know, our club, I think, has been blessed over the years to have the, the right people at the right time in the job. And certainly, Justin outlined the challenges we had, but his energy and, um, and good cheer really carried us through. And uh, off to you. Now I'd ask you. Terry, you've been selected by the members of this club to carry the mantle of leadership for the upcoming year. As many of us who have served in this leadership role can attest, it will be one of the civic privileges of your lifetime. You've been entrusted with an important local and global responsibility and are now asked to do your part in helping shape this club's future. Your selection is an expression of the club members' confidence in your leadership. So now I ask you to repeat after me as I administer the oath of prayer. I, Terry Snotty, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the Rotary Club of Worcester. And that I will, to the best of my ability, give support and assistance to our club, our district, and to Rotary International, and that I will uphold the Constitution and the bylaws of this club. Congratulations. 
part of our tradition, uh, we actually ask uh, past president Justin to go back present day to our president. American, help me. <laughs> yep. Once again, congratulations, President Terry, of the best wishes of the membership of Worcester Rotary and our promise to help you in what will be a successful year. Thank you, Past President Gorman. Appreciate your willingness to. Um, so the first thing I want to do is uh, we've got some things here for Justin. Um, so Justin, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Worcester and its members, I'm pleased to present the past president with well-deserved mementos of his leadership and achievements during his term as president. So we have the president's gavel. And his new badge. I know he's been excited about that one. Yeah, it's uh, great day. And the past president's pin. I'm just going to give that to you, Justin, because I'm not good at all. No, that's good, Matt. Thank, hey, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let me do a time check here. I know Stein spent most of the money, so I figured he'd take up most of the time. <laughs> So as I was preparing for this presentation, uh, I was telling my wife, you know, thinking about this day, I said, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that I'd be getting prepared to take over as Rotary President Worcester? And she said, Terry, you're not even in my wildest dreams. So I have to admit, before I move on from that, I stole that joke. I stole it from uh, this weekend's district meeting who I think he might have still wanted from Mitt Romney. But you know, I feel a lot of pressure to be funny up here um, and serving a career in accounting and finance. I'm going to work on that. I need all the help. So again, thank you to past President Justin. I've enjoyed working with you over this past year. Um, Justin's a guy who just gets things done. Um, you know, I think about this past year, we weren't meeting, we were meeting at Greystone, we were meeting back online, we came back here. Um, he's just a guy that makes it happen. I appreciate that he's in that role at this time. Also wanted to give a little shout out to Tom Cole. Tom was my sponsor of the club in 2007. Um, at the time, I started working at Ohio State University. I had a job that uh, was out of town, so I was sort of driving. So when I started working in Worcester, I wanted to join a service club. So I felt compelled to give back to the community. So Tom uh, took me along with him to a meeting, uh, went to a Rotary meeting in 2007. Um, got back from that meeting, got back to work, and Tom said, so what did you think? I said, well, I thought it was great. I said, you know, I, I do want to visit some of the other service clubs because I want to get a feel for what each one's about. And if, if you know Tom, he just kind of looked at me, absolutely, you should do that. But he said, you're going to realize pretty quickly there's only one club that, that you should be in. Tom was a unique guy. Uh, he was a Rotarian, his job's around the world, actually. So he was a unique guy and, and we miss him. Um, so I really like this tagline. I put this up there. Um, it's the tagline for Rotary, people of action. And really that's why I joined the club because I wanted, I wanted to provide service back to the community. So um, as we think through this next year, I really like that tagline. We're gonna be using that a lot. You know, now is the time to sort of re-engage after this past year. A um, Couple of things that president elects do throughout the year. So um, there's the international convention district meetings, and then there's something called the All, All Ohio Presidents Elect Training Pets. So as I was preparing for the year, um, there was an expectation that I attend each of these and, and uh, 
get nuggets of information that I can bring back and think about for our year. So I kind of wanted to go through those because it's important in the context of some of the things that I'm thinking about for this year. So first of all, the International Convention. Um, so in October of 2019, I think it was, um, Lynn contacted me and, and said that I had been nominated for presidency. I was very humbled and honored uh, to serve in that role, but I didn't immediately say yes because I needed to check on some things with my job. Things were changing a little bit and I knew I was gonna have to uh, drive to Columbus a couple of days a week. So I wanted to make sure it, it worked out. But Lynn then said to me, well, you know, the International Convention is in Hawaii. I was like, oh, cool. I've never been to Hawaii. I think that'd be great. So my wife and I, you know, we made plans. We were, we were gonna go to Maui for a couple of days after the convention. Um, so we had it all in the books. And of course, you know, we all know what happened. Uh, COVID happened in March of 2020. Uh, the convention was, the in-person convention was canceled. Um, but we did do, I did attend the convention. And it was a virtual convention. Um, so that was in uh, June of 2020. Uh, there's a picture of me attending one of the sessions. And I, I'm decked out in my Hawaiian shirt there in my attic. Um, this is a picture of uh, who was president at the time, Mark Maloney. And actually, you know, it was quite amazing that they were able to flip and do a uh, virtual convention that quickly. When you think about how COVID really hit in March, the convention was in June. I can only imagine what the leadership of Rotary International had to go through. And Zoom, a lot of people were just getting comfortable with Zoom at that point. So getting, getting that done was a, was a real yeoman's job, I'm sure. A couple of takeaways I had from the convention, um, member retention, recruitment, you know, how clubs are engaging in the pandemic and what's important to the new generation of Rotarians. Um, so this is a slide in, in one of the uh, sessions that I was in and it's a word cloud. I'm sure some of you have seen those. They do a survey and the words that are larger come up more often when people think of Rotary. So there's some good ones in there, you know, humanitarian, uh, volunteer, you know, old men, I'm not, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, these are perceptions that people have of Rotary. Actually, our club is, I think, about 40%, 35-40% women. So um, these are some of the perceptions that are out there about Rotary. Um, targeting the next generation of Rotarians, I think, is important. So 5%, this slide showed that 5% of Rotarians worldwide are under 40. Only 5%. What does that say for the future? We need to engage uh, younger folks in Rotary. Uh, for our club, it's around about 15%. We don't have the greatest data in club runner on birthdays and so forth, but when I looked at that, it's about 15%. So we're doing a little, a little better than the average. This is a slide again from one of the uh, sessions that I attended. And as you can see from the presenters there, this was the younger group. This is the new group of Rotarians coming in. So some of the things that they talked about there, who are the millennials? What do they want? Uh, what's the current future of di digital trends? Um, I thought this was a good slide that they put up. Um, who are millennials? So uh, those are those born between 1980 and 2000. Uh, they're the largest generation yet. They're the most et ethnically and racially diverse. Um, they grew up alongside technology. Um, and why do they matter? Well, um, by 2030, they're going to make up 75% of the workforce. So very soon, these are going to be the folks that are going to be leading us into the future. What do they want out of the service club? So a little more than half is service, which is good. That's what we do. Um, there's a social aspect to that. And then to a lesser degree, the professional development and the international service and travel. Oh, that's a picture from one of my breaks at the conference. Uh, that's the catered uh, break meal. And there's a picture of me enjoying some pineapple. Um, I, I like this slide as well. So a lot of the discussion at the convention was, you know, 
COVID has hit, what things are changing. So this slide was kind of uh, looking at the increased use of social media by age group. Um, so you can see across the board, there was an increase in using social media, but of course, more heavily, more heavily weighted to uh, the younger generation. So as we think about how we communicate, um, how we connect uh, with future members, uh, we want to make sure that we're continuing along this path. Uh, a lot of tools that they discussed, which we're using, obviously, Zoom, um, hybrid meetings, Kahoot, uh, some in person. So we're doing all of those because as a club, we have a diverse membership. Not everybody is in the same place. And I think it's important to continue to offer these. Um, you might have seen, I don't know how many people we have today, 18 it looks like online. And I've noticed the past few weeks it's somewhere around 20. So we'll continue to offer that as long as there's people that are, that are wanting to accept um, that format. Oh, this is the evening social. So that's us in our back patio there enjoying a drink. So got the lay on, so we're sporting. Um, so the, we had a tribe district membership workshop in September. Um, there's a picture of me attending that seminar. Um, this was basically three different districts in Ohio. It was the Northern Ohio districts. And you can see on this slide what were some of their goals of that meeting, keeping clubs vital, making rotary work, share the joy of rotary, building their momentum. And actually what most of that meeting turned into, because I was in several breakout sessions, was what are you guys doing? <laughs> is, that, who, is anybody meeting? Are you meeting hybrid? Are you meeting virtual? There was a lot of discussion. Then in um, March, we had the All Ohio Pets training. Now this is a training that's over multiple days. You can see there and that this typically happens in Columbus. So this would have been um, kind of um, me going down to Columbus for a few days for this. And it's basically just some of the same messages we heard at national and district, but how do we move forward? How do you keep members engaged? How do you increase your membership? You know, by the time I got to this point, uh, honestly, the, the Zoom meetings were getting just a little bit tiresome, so I can't even tell you half of what we said. And then a nice change. This past weekend, we had the Rotary District 6650 Conference in Boardman, Ohio, Holiday Inn, Youngstown. So we actually got to go in person, uh, sit at a table with other Rotarians. Uh, there's no substitute for meeting in person. Um, Zoom is great and, and it has it plays a role, but in things like that, um, it's really good to have, um, have an in-person form. Um, this is a picture of our new district governor receiving his pin from outgoing uh, district governor. So Steve Wilder, who's gonna be uh, joining us here on July 12th, is coming in uh, to his leadership role. And, you know, Phil was there as well. Phil, um, and I've had several people uh, come up to me and say, what a great resource Phil is for them. So Phil's got a nice uh, reputation there at the district level and really represents our club well. And Phil gave out a Paul Harris fellow to um, my Carol Lippin Walter. And it was the Pegasus uh, Equine Center that I think we had a program about that. Um, and she focuses on um, rehabilitation for veterans and, and others who may be at PTSD um, at the Equestrian Center. So Phil presented her with a Paul Harris fellow this weekend. Um, youth exchange. So um, Bill Wood was there. He's our um, district youth exchange coordinator. Actually, he and Brent Rice, our, our club member, um, have been doing that from a district level this year. Um, and it's not going to happen this year. So the Rotary International said that they're be no travel for exchange students until July 1st, 2022. So there won't be uh, any youth exchange program this year. And you could look at it a couple of ways. I, I had somebody tell me, well, you kind of get a break this year. So not if you don't have youth exchange, but I don't look at it that way. That's part of what Rotary does. It's sad that we can't do that this year. And I'm really looking forward to, to that re-energizing. Uh, that committee will be busy, though, this year because the application process for next year actually starts in the fall. 
Um, it's quite a long process. Um, there's a little bit of concern, and I was talking to Bill Wood, that getting through that process um, can be difficult. And especially if you don't know, um, is it going to happen next year? Is it not? What are vaccinations going to look like? So there's a lot of challenges with the youth exchange. Um, the last thing from that conference that I just wanted to touch on is um, our district governor had had a project, uh, Books for Kids in Vietnam. And um, they had a grant and there was some timing on the grant that they thought they were going to get it in and this year, but it's not going to be until next year. And the matching rules changed a little bit. So they were falling short. Um, so I reached out to Doug Gershel, our chair of our World Service Committee. And I said, you know, would this be a good way to use some of our money? So our club donated $500 um, to this effort um, for the district. So this was a quote, um, one of our speakers spent a lot of time talking about um, peace, you know, that's one of the Rotary's motto is his peace. And um, he was a really good speaker, um, talked a lot about how the world has changed a little bit and um, getting back to some basics. So this quote I thought was great, uh, between the stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and freedom. And that was Viktor Frankl, who was a Holocaust survivor. Um, and I think that's true. And I know I myself uh, could do better there. Um, we, we often have an immediate reaction to something without stopping to think about, um, does, this, does my response fall in line with the four-way test, for example? Um, so thinking a little bit before we speak, and uh, I think that was a good lesson. So all of those things kind of led me into thinking about this year, and I have service above self highlighted there. Um, that's going to be kind of my theme this year, getting back to basics. Uh, when I was talking to District Governor Steve Wilder, um, I said, what are your goals for the year? And he, he said, hey, after this last year, we just want to get back. We want to see people again, and we want to get back to normal. And that's kind of the same theme um, that I'm carrying through. Um, so we're going to try to um, have a few speakers throughout the year who exemplify service above self. Um, I have one coming up in September um, with a gentleman that I graduated high school with. Um, when I thought about somebody who takes service above self to a different level, um, this guy came to mind. Some of you may know him. His name is Kent Wellington. He's from Worcester, um, but he lives in Columbus. He's an attorney. Um, he'll be a great speaker, and he's, he's done a lot. Um, for, for several different things in his community. Um, so the priorities then in my coming year, carryover items from Justin's year, we have a few things that we're gonna continue, membership and engagement in our parade of flags. Um, but before I talk about those briefly, I'm just gonna uh, show you the, because I'm a numbers guy, I'm gonna show the budget. And I'm not sure if, let's see, this is all bars hiding that. But my year is down a little bit in terms of the funding that we we're gonna get out of the foundation. And that's primarily two reasons. The flag project in, in the prior year was down just a little. And the Meals with a Mission, of course, it was great that we did what we did, uh, but we got a lot less uh, this year. So the good news for the future is we've increased the subscriptions on the flag. So next year, Greg will have more money. And then the Meals with a Mission, I know that's off to a great start. Uh, Greg and his committee uh, planning that, and I expect those numbers to be back up. So some of the things then that I'm gonna spend the 46,000 on, it's all those typical stuff that we have. I did wanna put some more money back into scholarships. That was 10,000 a year before. And I felt that was an important part of what the club does. Um, the community projects, service projects is what really kind of took a hit. Um, we had to reduce that. That was kind of like our balancing figure. We, we've done a lot in community projects this year with Oak Hill Park and the flag installation down at the fairgrounds that we're gonna be doing. Uh, but I did wanna set, set aside some money for community service. So we've already talked about these, but President Justin Gere will have uh, the community flag project looking at a September 11th dedication and the 100 year celebration on October 7th. These really you know, should have happened during Justin's year. So um, he'll be front and center um, at the RMC at our 100 year celebration. Uh, membership and engagement, some things to think about here. Uh, just want to take a moment and 
and talk about the committee leads um, and some of the things that, that I want to do in the coming year. So our committees, I think it's important to kind of go through these um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them, but I still have a few, you see a few highlighted areas and there's still some that I'm trying to fill. So community service, I'm going to need somebody to lead that committee. Um, Membership, that's actually an important one and one that I wanna be involved with, but I'm looking for um, a couple of people to join me there. And I'd like a younger member and then also maybe a more seasoned member so that we can kind of do some of those things, um, some socials and things to bring in new members that would be targeting the age group. Um, scholarship, I am looking to fill. I did get a commitment uh, from Desiree Lott. She's a new, new Rotarian, I didn't want to task her with actually having to be a chair of the committee when she first started, but she's going to help with uh, some of the spreadsheet work on the scholarships, and then I'll be looking for a second person to fill that. And our program chairs had, had all agreed to continue their um, roles this year. So social media, um, one thing I'm really excited about, so Katie Kogelman has agreed to um, chair our communications uh, committee. And I think communications is gonna be more, more broad than it has been in the past. So social media, um, perhaps doing a newsletter monthly, uh, like some of the other services clubs do. How can we get this out there to as many people as possible? Um, Justin mentioned our YouTube channel. You know, I think that was a great addition this year. So we wanna to continue to populate that. New member recruitment. Um, really, this is a job for all members. Um, we, we all need to reach out. I know I haven't been the best person to do that in some in past uh, years with Rotary, but reach out to people and, and try to get them engaged in Rotary. Um, we did meet with some of the past presidents just to kind of go through um, some ideas, and you can see some of the ideas that past presidents threw out there for things that we could do. And social. So Justin mentioned the door of social. Um, we want to do more of those. I think it's important and a good way to re-engage um, the club. Uh, Phil has agreed to, and we've got to nail down a date, but has agreed to do a wine tasting with us. I think we did an event like that a few years back and we're gonna, we're gonna look at redoing that project. Parade of Flags, I've already talked to the club about this, um, so I won't go into detail here. We're just trying to make sure that we have the leadership transitions in place so that um, as members move through that committee, it's not, a life sentence, you know, that people can move in and out of leadership roles in the flag committee. And I think that's really important to keep that project going because it is our, our number one fundraiser and we need that to be successful. Um, so this was a slide at, at the, the national. It was 86% um, of children volunteer um, when their parents volunteer. So again, service above self. And I think we're passing it on to the next generation. Justin already covered this, but Mike Steiner's grandson is a good example of that, um, passing that on to the next generation. So um, I'm looking forward to the next year. Um, I'm happy uh, to be serving the club in this role and uh, certainly want to hear from you throughout the year. So if there's things that you want, um, we're potentially going to be doing a survey just to kind of get people reoriented and what they want out of Rotary um, and what changes that they might want to see. So that's all I had today. Uh, let's see. So um, thank you to our guests. I had to thank our, to our guests for attending today. Um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed your time here today and I hope to see you back at some point. And just as a reminder, um, there will be no new meeting next week. And then the week after that will be District Governor Steve Wine. Have a good day.